Um, and namaste guys, Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Monday afternoon. We're at the afternoon mark, we finally made it. Congratulations to each and every one of us. One more hour in the bank of our lives. Um, I want to jump on real quick. As you guys know, on these live streams, we talk about energy healing, meditation, and practical spirituality. And I thought, well, I have a healing coming up in about two hours with a client, and I wanted to, at least shop, and I must say, I wanted to discuss <clears throat> a book that I think would be very, very important for your personal and spiritual development, whether you, you yourself are a coach, a healer, a therapist, um, you work with lots and lots of people, um, or you yourself have emotions. Um, so many years ago, my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Kuksui, the modern founder of Pranic Healing and Arhatic Yoga, discovered that a lot of our physical ailments are connected to our thoughts and emotions, right? Our physical ailments are connected to our thoughts and emotions, especially things like uh, diabetes, blood pressure issues, um, liver issues, addictions, phobias, all of these things and I'm going to say all these things are affected by our thoughts and our feelings. So <clears throat> in the late 80s, Grandmaster Cho Kuksui Vivi, I'm going to say, welcome back from an amazing Anthony Robbins event, wrote a book called Pranic Psychotherapy. Pranic Psychotherapy. And what you see in the center of the book here, Adriana, I'm going to say, is the crown chakra, the chakra right on top of the head. So this is if you're looking at it from above, right? Like a bird's eye view. That's what the crown chakra looks like. It's multicolored. It's actually called the Sasrahara chakra in Sanskrit, which means thousand petal lotus. So on the outer periphery of our crown, right, on the outer periphery of our crown chakra, there are 960 petals. Say yes! Make your move! There are 960 petals. And then in the center, you have 12 petals. So if you had a, imagine like Adriana, number two, Abba Namaste. Imagine if you had a, um, a flower on top of your head rotating like this way, clockwise and counterclockwise. So in the outer periphery, you have 960 petals that are rotating clockwise and counterclockwise. In the center, in the center, you have 12 petals. The 12 petals mimics exactly the 12 petals of the heart chakra. So you have the heart chakra, Biases. <laughs> the heart chakra has 12 petals rotating clockwise and counterclockwise facing outward, right? And then right in the center of the crown, you have 12 petals. So this is the human heart, the heart we have for our friends and our family members. And then this is the sacred divine heart, the heart and love we have for God, the great teachers, angels, angelic realm, and people and souls we've never met in a physical body yet, right? So what's the significance? When we do pranic psychotherapy, which is using energy to disintegrate and remove negative thoughts, negative emotions, negative programs, limiting beliefs, calcified ideas, um, fears, addictions, all kinds of energies lodged in the emotional mental body, we use the crown chakra primarily to heal people of those conditions, right? So when you combine pranic psychotherapy with traditional, um, with traditional psychotherapy practices, you rapidly accelerate the person's healing rate. Why? Because when you sit down with a therapist, with a counselor, with a coach, with a mentor, what is it that they're trying to do? They're trying to get you, not them, they're trying to get you to have awareness. As you have awareness as to why you are the way that you are and why you may or may not be moving your life forward, you have inner transformation. That's what a therapist is doing. They're helping you have understanding and have awareness and then you can transform, right? Now, if your aura, energetically speaking, if your aura your chakras, your mental body where you have your thoughts, your emotional body where you have your feelings, if they are clouded and filled with energies that are very compacted, this big or much, much bigger, how effective do you think the mentoring, the, 
the therapy, the coaching, the healing will be, or talk therapy will be, it'll be very challenging, very difficult, right? So when you combine the two, in pranic psychotherapy, we go into the person's aura, chakras, mental body, emotional body, we disintegrate and remove all of those things, right? So then when the person sits down and has a conversation with a coach or with a therapist as to why they're stuck, A, they're gonna be much, much more receptive and open, right? And then it will be much, much faster for them to have the awareness and then transform from the inside out. Have you ever noticed either yourself or people that you've worked with in the past, you bring up a sensitive topic, a sensitive issue where there's a lot of negative emotion around it. How does that person respond? They close down. They stop talking because they're not open receptive because the feelings that that brings up is very painful for them, right? But if you did chronic psychotherapy, disintegrated the fear, the grief, the shame, the anger, what have you, then you brought up the conversation. The person feels much lighter, much happier, and much more willing to move in the direction of transforming their lives. So again, they go hand in hand. Now, here's the other thing. Let's say we just do pranic psychotherapy. We don't do any of the psychotherapy. We just do pranic psychotherapy. What is also missing? Well, you remove the negative thoughts, the negative emotions, the addictions, the phobias, the traumas, whatever that person's going through, but guess what? If they don't develop awareness and understanding, cast, I'm gonna say they cannot move their lives forward. Does that make sense? So you're combining the two. You're removing the blockages to understanding, then you're giving the person the ability to understand and then they can move their lives forward. It's kind of like recognizing that you have low self-esteem and low self-image. You don't think very highly of yourself. You have a lot of self-talk that's very negative and pessimistic and doomsday, right? Well, let's say you remove all of that, but you don't develop how to develop, you don't develop the awareness on how to develop good self-esteem, good self-image, good self-worth. So you're only taking care of one side of the equation. You wanna do both disintegrate and remove low self-esteem, low self-image, low self-worth, and then you want to supply that person, Taran I'm gonna say, you want to supply that person with new awareness of good self-esteem, good self-image, good self-worth. And I think that's actually a big reason connecting it to relationships. This has been my experience, I'm not saying this is your experience, but I grew up in an extremely dysfunctional household when it came to intimate relationships between men and women. And I had to learn through lots and lots of trial and error on how to have a quote-unquote normal, healthy relationship with a person. It took me a long time to get to that point. But if you look around, right, you see A, a lot of unhealthy relationships that are dysfunctional, right? And B, you don't see many relationships that are healthy and functional. So you need to remove all your thoughts and your preconceived ideas about unhealthy relationships and then you need to model healthy relationships. So you gotta take care of both sides of it. So that's why pranic psychotherapy helps with the removing of the energy, and then traditional psychotherapy helps a person um, get understanding. So that's why we have therapists, coaches, counselors, mentors, advisors, etc. But to accelerate this transformation, I recommend people get pranic psychotherapy. And, and probably, I would say 90% of my healing cases, working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, is pranic psychotherapy in origin. Yes, even if the person has physical ailment or physical problems, there can still be an emotional and psychological component. So then we go in, we remove the congested energies, the negative energies, the programs, the traumas, the addictions, the fears, what have you, and then we give the person understanding hey, maybe you should look at it this way. Maybe you should do this moving forward, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And remember, a good coach always asks questions. A good coach always gets buy-in from the person that they're coaching and working with. They don't tell. They don't tell. Because when you tell somebody something, what, is the, what are the two natural tendencies? One, you're going to resist because it's not your idea. It's somebody else's idea. Number two, if it goes wrong, 
what are you going to do? Take responsibility off of yourself and put it on the coach, the mentor, whomever, right? So you have a irresponsible life versus a responsible one. My teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, says, you can tell the development and maturity of a soul by how much it takes responsibility for its life. So the more you take responsibility for your life, the more empowered you become and the more advanced and mature you become, right? So take responsibility for your life. There's nothing wrong of seeking out co coaching, mentoring, healing, counseling. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But when you meet with a qualified expert and they help you with understanding and then they give you homework assignments to apply that understanding, it's your responsibility to take that counsel and move forward. It's also your responsibility to recognize whether that therapy and that therapist or that coach is helping you move forward. Because you can work with somebody for a year, right? Apply what they're teaching you and still not move your life forward. So in that case, maybe it's not the best match of a coach, a healer, a therapist for you. You want to try someone else. Does that make sense? But if you just meet with somebody once or twice and you don't do you, you're not open and receptive and you don't follow through on anything that they recommend for you, you can't really validate whether what they're saying is accurate or not because you haven't applied it into your own life. Does that make sense? So that being said, if I can assist you in your healing and transformation process, which I have uh, over 15 years of practical experience in, definitely go to my website. Super easy. It's my name, christianarlong.com. Super, super easy. You can schedule a consultation, which is free, or you can go right into a coaching and healing session there as well. And any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. Email me at christianrlong at gmail. I'm basically, if you just put in Christian R. Long on Google, I think I come up the first like two to three pages. So super easy. But I will say this, Justin Long, the famous actor, his brother's name is Christian Long. And for some weird reason, if you put in Christian Long, and I think even Christian R. Long, under Google Images, it shows his brother, who's not famous, and Christian Bale, for some reason. I don't know why. Apparently, the words Christian and Long seem to be hanging out with each other. So i got to get higher up in the search engines for images on Google for my name. So if you guys can help me with that, great. Give me a shout out. Um, and that's it. So I love you guys very, very much. Wait, how does one tell if it's negative thought form versus negative thought entity in its aura? Uh, very good. So Prashant is asking an excellent question, which that answer is actually in this book, Pranic Psychotherapy, because I always want to point you guys back to my teacher's teachings through his books, his CDs, his courses, his senior instructors, because that's where you're going to get the purest, most unadulterated information. But, simply put, a thought form is something that you create as soon as you have a thought. So if I'm thinking of an apple, in my mental body, an apple just got created, right? In my mental body, in the imaginary world, right? And as I give more emotion to that thought form of an apple, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and becomes more calcified in my aura, which would then do what? It would start attracting similar energies of an apple, and then surprise, surprise, we materialize a Granny Smith green apple you know, in the next couple days, right? So that's a thought form. You think of something, a thought form is created in your mental body. A thought entity is something that has, you created the thought form, right? You gave it emotions, and what's different is you gave it so much thought, so much emotion, and so much energy over a prolonged period of time that it starts to take on an energy and consciousness of its own. An energy and consciousness of its own. That is what an addiction is. Does that make sense? That is what an addiction is. And an addiction actually is both. It's a thought entity and it's a thought elemental. So an elemental are beings or energies in the lower world, right? That are just naturally occurring in the 
lower world of creation. Thought forms to thought entities is what we create and energize, right? Prashant gets it. So when we are suffering from a phobia, when we are suffering from an addiction, when we are suffering from low self-esteem and low self-image, it can be a tiny thought form, most likely not because it's kind of taking over our life, or it could be a thought entity, thought form entity, or um, or an elemental, right? Does that make sense? But again, Regina, I'm a namaste. Again, this is covered in the book, Pranic Psychotherapy. Letty, I'm a namaste in great detail. I highly recommend picking this book up. Again, if you're a healer, if you're a coach, if you're a therapist, if you're a person that has emotions, I recommend picking up this book and reading it cover to cover. Now, just because you read this book, everybody, Roberta, I'm gonna say, just because you read this book, does that mean you're going to completely dissolve and disintegrate any and all negative thoughts and negative emotions you've ever had and will ever have? Of course not. Reading and applying are two different skill sets. Understanding and applying are two different skill sets. But once you read the book, once you understand it and apply it, which means you would have to take three classes in pranic healing to qualify to understand this material to a higher degree, you take level one, level two, and level three. Now you have tools and techniques that you can apply for the rest of your life to heal yourself and to heal negative thoughts, negative emotions from your past and from your current reality. Because guess what, guys? The reason life is not static it's because we're always creating new thoughts, right? And energy is always moving. That's why there is no this. This is when you're dead. And even when you're dead, the body's just not moving. Even that's not accurate because what's happening to the body? It's decomposing, right? So there is no such thing as flat lining or maintaining in life. You're either going up or you're coming down. Jillian, I'm a namaste. You're going up, you're going down. So that's what our emotions are doing all the time. So our goal is to be more like this, to make this last longer of good thoughts and good feelings and to minimize the drop of negative thoughts and negative emotions, right? Does that make sense? So the book and the class, Pranic Psychotherapy, can help you with that. Moro, right, well, namaste. Good to have you back on. So. That's it, guys. That's just me jumping on real quick, sending out some love. Again, if you are in need of coaching and healing to move your life forward in some area, go to christianrlong.com, schedule a free consultation and or a healing directly on the website. And I look forward to serving you very, very soon. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Bye-bye.